What is longevity? Longevity is a paradigm change of a traditional healthcare. If I want to define longevity, to me it is a healthy and active form of living. Longevity means not only how long you live, but how healthy you live. It's not just the quantity of life, it's more important the quality of life. It's better to be at top peak performance in your life than just work, than being all concerned just about the years. And my recommendation to people is to, to find out more about how you can make your lifestyle better. You know, one thing I think you can do is just take your phone and put it down. I mean, for me, longevity was stretching a mixed martial arts career where the average is about six years to, to 14 years. And I think it's very important that when taking care of your bodies, you take care of it now. What longevity means to me is take care of yourself, not only on the outside, but the inside. I think our goal here is to make sure that everyone lives long and does so feeling well. As historically, there was a time when we were dying in our 40s, and now we have the opportunity to live longer, and I see the potential to live even longer. Longevity is a paradigm change of a traditional healthcare. Traditional healthcare is focused on you no know, disease, especially uh, the health is defined like absence of disease. It's not like for longevity. In longevity, we are looking at all the states before disease can manifest itself. So we are actually trying to improve the health or health, closely correlated to the process of aging. So we are aging from from our from our births uh, up to the moment that disease start accumulating and we become like we we get uh, into this state of comorbidities. So we are trying to prevent that state or to delay that moment as far as possible. Longevity means not only how long you live, but how healthy you live. It's not just the quantity of life, it's more important the quality of life. It's better to be at top peak performance in your life than just what, than being all concerned just about the years. I need that to be said. When it comes to this question, I would rather focus on the quality of life than a longevity. One aspect is to live a quality life, to focus on the presence, and to be fully immersed in the moment, as well as following the science taking supplements and vitamins that our body needs, which I think can lead to an even better quality of life. What longevity means to me is take care of yourself, not only on the outside, but the inside. So it's one thing to lift weights to get big, but you also have to eat the right foods to feel good and recover and refreshed. I like to go to bed tired, I like to wake up refreshed. The only way you can do that, good nutrition, consistent training, and also doing lots and lots of cardio. That will take you to longevity. What does longevity mean to me? I, I mean, for me, longevity was stretching a mixed martial arts career where the average is about six years to, to 14 years to be able to compete well into my 30s and, and late 40s. I think that's what longevity means. That means you have to train properly, you know, find proper nutrition, get proper rest and take care of the machine that you're trying to run. For me, longevity 
um, is really being able to perform at the highest levels for, for as long as possible, but also longevity is, is to be able to be in the world and be active and be mobile and play with my children long after my career is done. To me, longevity means to be active my entire life and not to be lazy. I am looking at this from two perspectives. The first one is my private one. Being active together with my entire family, with my children or my wife, spend time doing sports together such as cycling, rollerblading, going for walks, to be active with children, to show them that sport is great, that sport activities are important in our life. Playing with children and to show them how to play sport is important too. To me, as a former elite athlete, it is important to maintain my physique and stay active. Not to be lazy and go for a run or to play a game of hockey or a soccer. To stay active as long as possible. As it gives you a certain routine and you get to maintain your health longer too. So longevity, obviously, it's about living long, but really it's about living really well, having the great quality of life for as long as possible. Longevity means staying balanced, so that you can do something for an, an amount of a period of time and still maintain a certain level of participation in that particular thing. I, that's when I think longevity is. Uh, the question about longevity is uh, is something different. Really, what does longevity mean is something different to all of us. Uh, but for me, uh, longevity is a uh, is essentially how we live our lives. Um, longevity is more about uh, the the life that we have in our years versus how many years there are in our life. I think longevity is a big topic at the moment, especially because we all live now a lot longer. Our lifespan has been extended. Despite the fact that we do live longer, not everyone can be still productive in the older age. I believe that aging does not have to mean that you get ill and you have a more limited lifestyle. We should age healthily. Therefore, I think it is important we pay attention to the topic of longevity in early days. It means everything. Longevity is life, right? I mean, you know, when we're born, we think uh, everything is just fast, and we have every uh, you know every day uh, guaranteed to us. So, longevity is everything. It means lives. Longevity means live, living a long time, but also living a quality life, being pain-free and showing it, using my mind and my body together. Longevity to me means aging gracefully, healthy aging. So as you get into those golden years, you'll be able to perform better if it's at your job or hobby. So we want to extend that lifespan. Staying in health, working out, staying in fitness is the most important thing in life. Because if you don't have a good health, it cannot function your life. It means more than money. And that, that can't be replaced as fitness. Nutrition and exercise is extremely important. I've been in the martial arts since 65 all my life. I think it means multiple things. I, I think it is that as we grow older, uh, we want to not just live, but we want to live well. And we want to be able to do everything that we have done throughout our lives. And the only way we can do that is to take care of ourselves now and, and do the things that need to be done. It's that um, you're able to maintain your chi energy for, you know what I'm saying? The rest of your life, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So, you know, when you get older, you have to keep on training to make sure that that chi energy keeps on evolving, growing, and growing. What does longevity mean to me? It means being able to get up at my own, go and run a, run a race on my own, come back on my own, and feel good about running that race. Longevity, I like to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. If you're able to make any sense of that, God bless you. This is Health and Fitness, and for me, it is longevity. It is the point of doing this for a lifetime, not just for their teenage years and your 20s, but for a lifetime. For me, it's where I've been doing like my, little, my longest time out of being training. It's what's kept me being a long training, uh, trying to be safe, 
They're trying to be like bumper stuff, wash things up. And then you will reach to level that we want. Longevity is a lifestyle. It's not just for the day of the boards forever. It's for everyone. Longevity is an increase in the quantity of life as a side effect of an optimal health span, related especially among others to lifestyle options chosen. Uh, longevity to me means living the healthiest and happiest as possible till your late life. So it's really about expanding the, the health span to match your lifespan. What does longevity mean to me? Longevity means living a healthy, meaningful life where I can um, take part in things with my loved ones and friends and uh, be healthy and live a long life. Longevity really implies that you have not just a longer life, but a high quality of life while you're alive. So when I was a senior in high school, in my yearbook, I wrote, learn as if you were going to live forever and live as if you were going to die tomorrow. And I think with longevity, the key is how do we live, not how long we live. And for me, it's how do we show unconditional love to those around us? And how do we practice with unconditional love? Because love is truly the most powerful healer. So that's my quip for longevity. I would define it as a longer and healthier life beyond the life expectancy of the individual. So longevity to me is how long you live, but it's not about just living long, it's about how well you live. So it's about lifespan rather than just how long you live. And it's about bringing together diet, exercise, stress management, sleep, lifestyles, and Hormones are part of it because without, if your hormones are not in balance, when you're young, you're full of energy. When you get old, you can't move anymore because you have no hormones. And without hormones, you can't exercise, you can't eat right, you're eating junk basically. And you have to really balance the pieces. Longevity is everything. Because what happens is, as historically, there was a time when we were dying in our 40s and now we have the opportunity to live longer and I see the potential to live even longer. So by paying attention to longevity is definitely going to be an important factor because that allows us to extend our journey on Earth. We work in this area for a long time and the aim of longevity is to extend an active and healthy part of our life. We do not promise people that they will live until they are 150 years old, but if they can live until they are 90 years old, be active, live a quality life until the end, that I believe is certainly an achievable goal. I think that we are on the right path to achieve this through advanced therapies. Our aim is to make this accessible also to the general public. So this is not just a privilege for the rich part of our society. Well, this is my philosophy of a longevity. Longevity is an upcoming mega trend because this basically addresses the uh, very close and uh, important issue of growing incidence of chronic disease through the aging population. And now the population is aging globally. So there is going to be more and more people in this period of life when we uh, get more and more disease and become comor uh, in the face of comorbidities. So they will create a super high press on all healthcare and pension systems and it will become unsustainable within the next 10 years. Other way around, if you look at the possibility to expand or part of the life without disease, which is some, sometimes called health plan, uh, it can come with uh, significant economical benefits. It has been calculated that prolonging health plan by 10 years, which is somehow possible even with technologies we know already now, uh, it can bring uh, economical benefits in a size of 367 trillions of US dollars just in the US economy. And we, as a health and longevity clinic, we are at the forefront of this process. So we are working closely with uh, other longevity tech fund portfolio companies to bring these cutting edge science technologies 
on how to expand health and how to improve our health into the uh, or uh, between our clients. Hi from Boca Raton, from sunny Florida, in the US. I am standing in front of our new longevity clinic. This is our second clinic, the first one is in Prague. Our goal is to extend the quality of life for people and watch their biomarkers. I'm currently at Boca Raton in the Healthy Longevity Clinic, and we're excited to partner with these people to open up their clinic, and they're offering um, what we provide is a clearly AI analysis of a coronary CTA. Um, as far as longevity and, and prevention of disease, this is probably one of the cutting edge tools that we think is going to curb heart disease. And um, we do an AI analysis of a coronary CTA. It's the only way that you can determine how much soft plaque you have and what type of plaque that is. Um, currently, it's the only way that we know how to track disease. And um, again, our, we think that this is the most cutting edge test and, and the best way to, to curb heart disease. Mitochondrial medicine is a huge part of longevity. What we look at is especially, especially mitochondrial efficiency, meaning we look at how well the mitochondria produces energy. What we look at as well is at factors that influence how the mitochondria function, meaning we can determine if there's any factors that destroy or damage the mitochondria. Uh, we look at factors that could influence how the mitochondria produce energy, let's say heavy metals or other toxins. Uh, we also determine if there is deficiencies, if the person has any, uh, let's say, for example, deficiencies in, in, mitro, uh, in mit minerals. Or what we also look at is if the person has any deficiency in minerals or other cofactors that influence the mitochondrial metabolism, because then we can determine if there's any insufficiencies that lead to de decreased mitochondrial function. So why are mitochondria that important for, for longevity? Well, it's the cell's powerhouse. It produces energy and the cell can function without it. And nowadays we also know that it is important for many, many diseases. Uh, well, important it is basically uh, if the mitochondria are damaged or somehow impaired, it causes the, the cell to produce less energy. It means that the person feels more tired, the person is also uh, functioning much less well, and depending on uh, the organ where it shows the most, the symptoms are different, of course. Nowadays we know that many lifestyle diseases and other things that we consider very important in longevity have mitochondrial dysfunction at their core. So improving the mitochondrial metabolism and improving how mitochondria function is and always will be a very important part in longevity and in disease prevention. Uh, my background uh, is in critical care. I am super excited to be a part of this team. Um, as far as longevity, longevity means to me that you're living a long life. And I think it's very important that when taking care of your bodies, you take care of it now versus waiting till when you're very sick. And the medicine and the modalities and equipment we have here really can help make a difference in people's lives. And I'm just super glad that I get to be a part of this team, so. So longevity means to me is living the healthy, longer life. As simple as that. As we get older, you know, we get compromised with adult onset diseases that make life almost not worth living. So we're trying to improve health span with the introduction of T65 in the diet. T65 has shown the lengthy telomeres of humans and also allowing us to have vitality in our life. And we recommend for people to start on T65 because it shows not only lengthening of telomeres, but also reduction in senescent T cells up to 21% and an increase in naive T cells of 10%. Yeah, so uh, longevity means to me the ability to age and live the life that you want. Uh, as we age, uh, some of our capacities diminish 
Um, and I think longevity is trying to fix that diminishing capacity. Um, you know, in terms of uh, what we do for longevity, we try and test it as best as possible. There are a lot of ways to test longevity, but epigenetic age testing is probably definitively some of the most exciting science for age quantitation. And that's what we try and do. We tell you your biological age, your rate of aging, um, and many other factors like your telomere length, for instance. And in terms of what I recommend people to do, uh, science is really just starting to be really robust. So the number one thing I recommend is a little bit self-serving, but it's to test yourself, to see how your own aging process uh, can be improved and to find the things that work for you. Uh, you know, things like rapamycin work well through just my epigenetic aging, uh, but everyone is a little bit different. So I recommend that people test to find the best intervention. One of our new diagnostics methods is an analysis of the brain. We perform this test together with an American company called BrainKey. Using nuclear magnetic resonance, we take images of the brain. We send these scans, slices, to our partners for a detailed analysis. We can read each individual parts of the brain as well as its volume and the ratio of gray and white matter. We are able to produce a great protocol, which compares to the population average in humans. This is a great method of diagnostics not just for the healthy population, but also for anyone with a neurodegenerative illness, because we can obtain relevant data. Also, we are able to print 3D images of the brain as one-to-one -one ratio. This is a new method, which we use also for our athletes. With professional athletes, we tend to screen them annually, uh, and make sure that we measure uh, whether there's any signs of stenosis in the great arteries, uh, like the carotids, the abdominal aorta, and also we uh, have a look at the heart, because um, in their line of work, it's very important uh, to make sure that we don't miss anything. We use the bioelectrical impedance to assess individuals' body composition. We, we can look at fat-free mass and fat mass content, and, and this is especially important in athletes where we can you know, adjust the training and we can adjust nutrition and their training plan to get better results. So we do this on a regular basis. When I look at longevity, I am most um, excited to be part of this team because we're bringing advanced uh, diagnostics as well as advanced therapies to our patients, which will allow them to optimize their lifespan and also improve their lifestyles through exercise, um, diet and um, sleep and stress removal. So super excited to be part of the team and look forward to sharing our clinic with you. What is clearly doing for longevity? We're focusing all our efforts and utilizing technology to get the number one killer, coronary artery disease. We do that providing technology that looks at an individual's vessels and their coronary mouth to assess their plaque and the hidden killers that can lure lead to sudden cardiac arrest. So what do we want to do here clearly? Eliminate heart attacks by utilization of technology. The ultrasound is a part of a modern and non-invasive method of diagnostics of any internal organs in our body. We can quickly detect any changes in the body. When we perform the ultrasound diagnostics of carotid arteries, we can find out any changes in these arteries. Based on the condition of carotid arteries, we can determine the condition of arteries in our entire body. Uh, preventative medical checkup is a very important tool for the preservation of athletic longevity. Also, for the determination of a sport's performance. 
More precisely, for the determination of any physiological prerequisites for sports performance. This type of medical testing goes hand in hand with a relevant examination. This is possible to conduct during one medical appointment. To start off with, we are often looking at very small findings in the musculoskeletal system. While performing a stress test, we can find for example a shortness of breath or other health issues. According to the medical legislation, these types of tests need to be carried out once per year, and they certainly do have their significance. The levels and types of stress on our heart and body are increasing every year, and therefore it is vital to perform these stress tests. Well, I'm a gut health specialist, so I look at longevity from the point of view of what's happening in the gut and the gut microbiome to rebalance, because a lot of people, what will affect their longevity is too many inflammatory microbes inside the gut. So it's really looking at the gut and rebalancing the gut, reducing inflammation to then improve the body's resilience and create more of an anti-aging environment inside the body. Well, the books uh, that I've written are related to vascular aging, um, prevention of hypertension, lipids, all those risk factors. So if your arteries get old, then you're getting old. So Oshwar said this, a man is as old as his arteries. So all the books that I've written improve vascular health, vascular aging, and that in turn is gonna increase longevity. The philosophy of LifeFlank is to make available our world-class patented technology to enhance and optimize health span and longevity for people worldwide. Um, as far as growl and gallery is concerned, um, how does that fit in? We are looking to detect cancer early. So uh, we want people to live long, healthy lives. And by screening patients with a simple blood test that can detect over 50 types of cancer as early as, in some cases, as early as stage one, uh, we're giving people the ability to um, find out early and treat it when it's treatable versus when it's too late so that they can live a long life. And this is our EBOO system, E-B-O-O, -O, stands for extracorporeal blood ozonation and oxygenation. It takes two liters of a patient's blood, ozonates it, then sends it through ultraviolet blood irradiation. And with two liters of blood, that's like getting a full body stem cell treatment. So what does that mean? Ozone, which is concentrated oxygen, is affecting uh, the body at a cellular level. So it goes into your mitochondria and stimulates ADP and then ATP production, which is the energy mechanism for healing in your body. So if you're comparing it to regular oxygen, oxygen is taken from the mitochondria to produce ATP, but when you put ozone into the body, which is O3 instead of O2, then that produces the mitochondria doing energy 40% higher. So what does that mean? Well, you're gonna get better skin, you're gonna have better joint uh, uh, pain relief, you're gonna be detoxed, your body is gonna function more like it did when you were a teenager or a baby than what it is now. And this treatment will probably last you in the neighborhood of 90 days. And it is one of the best treatments I've been in regenerative medicine for 30 years. And if I had to start it all over again, this is, would be the system or the, the uh, technology that I would utilize to start my business. You know, one of the things that I look at, uh, and I've been working with the company TA Sciences for about 10 years now, we have a product that promotes, uh, or actually lengthens telomeres and helps improve the immune system. So it's called TA65, and this product actually has been proven to activate telomerase and lengthen telomeres in humans. Uh, we have 11 peer-reviewed published clinical studies to date. Five of those 11 studies are double-blind placebo-controlled studies. Uh, with that, we've also been able to prove in double-blinded studies how we impact the immune system, specifically looking at senescent cell reduction on an average of 21% at any dose of TA65. Another uh, important note is that we actually improve naive T cell counts in the immune system by around 12% at any dose. And it's very difficult to do that, whereas we're actually help putting new naive T cells back into the body, reducing the senescent cell load, and improving the immune system overall while lengthening telomeres uh, is kind of a good combination one-two punched to help keep 
the body healthy and active for a longer health span. Peptides have been a part of medicine since the 1920s, and obviously the future of medicine is going to be involved in how we continue to use these peptides as signals that create homeostasis and promote longevity. A longevity, wellness, anti-aging, uh, there's many facets to it. It's what we can do to really uh, expand our life. So what does that mean? It means exercise, it means strength training, it watching what we eat, uh, mentally and physically. So there's a whole component, it's mind, body, and spirit. It's also environment, so longevity. What environment are we around or surrounded by? Including people, places, things. Uh, longevity, eating healthy, limiting the amount of alcohol, sugar, processed foods, expanding our lifespan, but having uh, consistent habits daily that you live by in practice, uh, from a physical perspective, a mental perspective, and a spiritual perspective, uh, trying to stay at peace and calm because it all ties in and it's well connected. So if you want to extend your life, those three things, mind, body, and spirit, exercise, and that's what we do uh, with Muscle Fitness Plus. It's all about education and raising awareness, uh, diet, nutrition, supplementation, uh, what's happening on the inside, your blood work, identifying immediate needs and deficiencies, and then replacing that with hormone therapy, TRT if needed, amino peptide therapy, but all this is out there to extend your life, longevity, uh, anti-aging, all those things that we can do to have a longer, happier, healthier life. That's really the difference between lifespan and health span. Of course, we want to live the longest lives that we can. Um, and in so doing, our goals are to uh, be productive in our lives, eat healthy, drink healthy, um, sleep well, uh, be around people that we love, exercise, and of course, be very reactive, um, uh, not reactive to our healthcare, but be proactive towards our healthcare. Uh, reactive to when we feel something that might be wrong, but hopefully being proactive, uh, we will have taken that uh, care of that prior to it uh, rearing its, its ugly head. Um, it's important uh, to understand what longevity might be in the future based on the last 10, 12 years of research where we're really starting to understand treating aging as a disease. And that means that the main constellations of disease, cardiac disease, Alzheimer's, osteoporosis, and the like, can be treated by really looking at constructs around how we live our lives, where we live our lives, um, how, we, how we shape our daily lives, and, and the effect that all of that has on our environments. Um, you live in a big city and you're surrounded by lots of pollution versus living in the country uh, where there's less stress and less pollution. Uh, and our genetics happen to be um, good, uh, we tend to have a, a better chance of, of, of having longer uh, lives. That, that, that is very much uh, illustrated in some of the geographic differences in uh, typical types of cancers that we hear about in certain populations, less in others. Um, when we see people living uh, in communities that are surrounded by loved ones and, and, and a lot of caringness around them, they tend to do very well versus uh, people that have live in large cities and have lots of stress, uh, tend to do not so, uh, not so well. We could extrapolate that further in that uh, about 25% of, of what we are um, in terms of our outcome and our health span is related to, gene, to genes, to genetics. And about 75% of it is related to our environment or so-called epigenetics. So these are complex questions. Many uh, questions are still being answered. But um, we understand that our health span and our lifespan um, is increasing year on year, and that these incredible advances in medicine, as well as in computational mathematics and biology, will shape um, the years to come. I based my practice um, in a precise diagnosis of each patient, beginning and including a health of test to assess how, how are they aging and what are the the points that we need to focus on to to work and to improve their their health span and to improve their uh, aging process, and after that, that that would be the points where we could uh, think about and how to work. Microtoxins are important in longevity because they shorten life. What microtoxins do is they attack mitochondria and cause what is known as mitochondrial dysregulation. That in turn kills the cell. It's known as cell apoptosis. And so cells die. For example, in patients with Alzheimer's disease, 
38% were found to have mycotoxins in the brain. In, in patients with Parkinson's disease, 100% had mold in their brain, which produces mycotoxins. So to shorten life, these mycotoxins are tough in doing damage to the whole body, starting in the brain, going to all the blood vessels, and then in the digestive tract. Lastly, they're known to cause cancer, which of course is not, it's something that affects many people, and autoimmune diseases. And so, by doing a test, a blood test, that's not a urine test, a blood test for mycotoxins, is a quick way to find out and to get it treated, so you get rid of it, in about six months. And you get well, and you live a long and good, healthy life. Jak praktizují nebo co dělám já pro longevity? What do I do for longevity? In our incredibly fast way of living, it is very hard to balance our life, especially if you want to be successful at work, in your personal life, this is a big demand, and the day has only 24 hours. It is vital to find the time for sport, especially if a person has a sedentary form of work, we need to plan and allocate the time to be active, we were born to be moving, we are human beings and we need to use our skeleton and muscles, it is our physiological function, we need to follow this. Another part is a quality and diver's diet, part of longevity is also fasting, but this must go hand in hand with a variety and quality diet. It is important what we eat. There is a saying that we are what we eat. Certainly, if people are not sure about how to achieve this, then they need to seek an advice from a personal trainer, a life coach, or a physiotherapist. A quality sleep is also indispensable. To be able to get seven or eight hours of sleep, this is individual of course. A good sleep guarantees a recovery, it replenishes energy, and we can recharge our batteries. To enjoy life, to be happy and to choose a profession, which we enjoy as well as to choose a right partner whom we can have a quality life with, those are the essentials for longevity. I could continue like this, but for me it is essential to have a space for an exercise, a quality sleep, diet, and finally, a quality life. Same question, basically. I mean, supplementation, proper food, good water, proper rest and recovery, using the modalities available to us through sports medicine now, cold lasers, cryo chambers, cold plunges, uh, all kinds of, we have a lot of, a lot of modalities at our disposal now to deal with both injuries and keeping our bodies finely tuned so we can perform at our highest level. Without, you must be right, you must get your rest, you must get your supplementation, you must get your protein intake, if you're drilling up, you know, how much water that you take in, and then your workouts. And that is only gonna fix your physical body. Let's talk about your spiritual mind and your mindset. If all you do is think negative, 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 negative things happen. If you think positive, 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 you bring positive things into happening. And your spirit, think light and white. What do I do for longevity? Well, I take vitamins every day. I take a lot of vitamins every day. I'm very careful on my diet. I make sure I train. I like to do weight training because I think resistance training is very important for maintaining your bone mass, your muscle mass, and your strength. So you gotta know you have a good diet, good lifestyle. And the other big thing is avoid stress. The problem is that people allow stress to cut into their lifestyle. And it doesn't matter how healthy you are, if you have a lot of stress, it's going to destroy your health. <laughs> My motto is to go, believe and achieve. It is important to realize all factors which influence the quality of each day, the quality of recovery, which has an impact on the performance, on the actual fight. We are talking about a quality sleep, cold baths, a well-balanced training together with a healthy diet and a healthy mindset, then everything will work as it should. What do I do for my life company? What I do for long gym, I ride my bike. I get out of the gym. I spent a whole lifetime training in the gym for my appearance. Now I'm out of the gym and I ride the bike and build up my stamina, build up my cardio, help burn the body fat. It makes me feel refreshed. 
and out to the heart on the hit side. That's the most support. You know, as I'm aging, I want to constantly have a good quality of life. So for me, longevity is living a good quality of life. And I've been doing this through eating proper, training proper, uh, supplementation, all these things that have helped me. So what I do for longevity is basically live a healthy lifestyle. Living a healthy lifestyle for me is, you know, being able to, you know, live a style where I'm eating properly, training properly, taking the right supplements to stay, you know, to stay healthy. Um, that's what we're gonna be to be successful in longevity. It is essential to eat a good food, be active and do sport activities. When it comes to my diet, I do not always eat super healthy, but I try to eat well most of the time. I make sure I always have a hearty breakfast. For lunch I can eat anything and for dinner I would only have a salad and meat. I go for around three to four times per week and twice per week I do weights. I'm trying not to have big breaks in between of exercises or a healthy diet, the so-called yo-yo effect. In my life, some form of movement has always played an important role. This means I look after my body through practicing a dance, a yoga, which I really like, and running. Also, I'm a workaholic, so sometimes it's hard to balance this out. Another important part in my lifestyle plays my diet. I have a lot of allergies. Not just food allergies, but also air allergies. Therefore, I have to read labels on food and ingredients in food. This means I pay more attention to what I eat. The other thing is the sun. The Czech winters are long and dark, and it is a problem for me. I need the sun, so I try to spend winter somewhere in a warm country so my skin gets enough of vitamin D and I stay happy. I think the sun does have an impact on my mood and how I feel. Now, I run Quicksilver Scientific and we use a lot of very high-end supplements here and our biggest focus is detoxification. I'm going to be lecturing later about how detoxification itself is one of the major pillars of longevity and how we're able to reverse biological or epigenetic age and slow the rate of aging by taking toxins out of the system. Only then can you do things like uh, NAD building and sirtuin activation and get the best out and down. And then we can get up to the higher things that we need. We need hormone supplementation, uh, things like stem cells, exosol, peptides. Those are the really high-end longevity factors that I use but if I don't detoxify and if I don't have a clean metabolism, none of that stuff is really going to work. Um, for longevity, for me, I spend, you know, my diet is very important. I eat good, healthy food. I have a hyperbaric chamber, uh, infrared sauna, cold plunge. Um, you know, I make sure I get eight to 10 hours of sleep every night. I, you know, spend a lot of time in prayer and meditation. Um, I really believe in the mind, the body, and the spirit all working together as one to, to make you the most successful and to live the longest, ha happiest life. So what do I do as far as uh, longevity as I train every single day? You know, say 24-7, even though I did a demonstration that we're going to train tonight again. And uh, the most important thing is just be grateful and thank the good Lord. And uh, everybody else, I just want to make sure that you keep your GMG going by training every single day because there are no shortcuts to longevity. I'm lucky because I, I have the love of martial arts, so I'm I'm always going to train in martial arts. But there's so much so much more things I do from supplements to uh, being with the right people and, and, and having myself in the right freedom of mind and uh, and always thinking about you know what can I do to make myself more healthy, to continue to uh, live a life that's, that is healthy. Like I said, exercise, run, kick, punch, those are extremely things, and do not watch TV. It's a time killer, and it promotes negativity. What do I do? I still work out almost every day. 
I work my mind, I work my body, I interact with people. Not staying social distance and stuff like that. I engage life and going to live it to the end. I do not eat red meat. I do hot yoga every day. Um, I take supplements and try to balance the, the good with the bad. Not, not too extreme one way and not too extreme the other, but try to keep a balance and um, uh, do things that make me happy. While I'm here, I want to make sure to promote wellness and everything I do. I want to watch uh, what I'm taking to uh, things that impact my health for my gut, my brain, my immune system. Uh, if I can have something that impacts TeleMeLink, for example, is also uh, a great way to help promote my longevity. Exercising is a big piece of that too. Lifestyles in general, uh, you know, we always want to make sure we're eating very healthy, staying active, and you're incorporating the protocols that can promote longevity lifestyle. So I myself for longevity, sleep is absolutely core. I do my PEMF map before bed. Um, I have magnesium uh, before bed. I have a very routine schedule uh, so that I get great sleep, but sleep for me is absolutely the most important. The second thing would be diet. I eat incredibly clean, all organic, um, all whole foods, no processed foods, very minimal sugar, um, and then loving life and having relationships that are healthy. Well, to me, the meaning of longevity would include the aspects of, uh, of the li an individual's lifespan but also the extension of the years free of diseases, the, the years uh, of an individual's health. Practicing longevity while being a mother of sex is sometimes challenging. There is a high demand for discipline, consistency and balance during multitasking days, which are the majority of them. Even more complicated if you think in a broader scope of health and you care about the health of your family, your work team and community and our planet. How for eating habits, I exercise, try to get adequate rest of your sleep is very, very important. And yes, I do supplement and um, try to minimize stress as much as possible. Those are some of the key ingredients. Stay away from negative people. Those are some of the things that I've, I believe can be very impactful in terms of my long-term health. And I'm involved in an MVBIP program. So, you know, like blood work, I do it twice per year, make sure everything is intact and, you know, I get monitored by a physician ongoing. So those are the things that I'm currently doing. So when it comes to set exercise, um, cardiorespiratory fitness, strength training, minimize stress, proper eating habits, uh, those are some of the key ingredients. Sleep, those are, uh, are what I'm doing for longevity at this time. Um, as a clinical program director, I've been working with this amazing team, putting together um, a multitude of different programs to help our patients. Uh, some examples include a brain health program, heart health, immune, cellular regeneration, and regenerative aesthetics. So we're, we're truly treating the body from the inside out. We have designed our clinic to offer many different types of advanced diagnostics, services, and therapies and the whole intention is to improve the functionality of the human body. Um, right now, the way medicine is designed, we, we are more reactive than proactive, so we're trying to flip that on its head and be proactive instead of reactive. So many systems in the body age at different rates. Uh, we're trying to identify where these systems are as our baseline testing package, and over time, repeat testing um, in addition to recommendations to improve all these systems of aging. So immune system, heart, brain, like I mentioned, inflammation, blood sugar. We have a, a lot of things we can do here um, that will have great potential for our patients. Telomere analysis is used in our area of specialized diagnostics for several years. It is an important biomarker for diagnostics, not just for athletes, but also for general public. We measure the length of DNA end caps called telomeres, which protect genetical information. Essentially, this gives us the information of the person's aging and about the progress of the cellular metabolism. We can also see how the state of exercise and stress affects the individual. Therefore, this is a very important biomarker for us. We take 10 milliliters of blood from each individual and we send this sample for an analysis. 
Scanning electron microscope, SEM, performs a measurement of 100,000 of telomeres. We get the results within two to three weeks. Based on this, we perform a once a year medical checkup to see if everything functions well. I'm excited to bring the new technologies that we have here that are on the forefront of medicine um, to everyone that wants to come in to learn more about their health from genetics to uh, the microbiome to their hormones and help people to improve their health span to match their lifespan. I think our goal here is to make sure that everyone lives long and does so feeling well. And so in order to do that, knowledge is power. We give you the ability to really be able to see what's going on in the inside to make it match your outside and really to optimize your body, um, mind, body, and soul. And so we're really hoping to do that through our programs, our supplementation and pharmacotherapy, and really just give you the, the power to make changes on your own by knowing what's going on underneath the surface. The gut health examination is important in the terms of complete preventive anti-admission and also in terms of functional problems of the gut and the body because the gut is an important part of the whole body and is connected to the every other system in the body. We examine the gut microbiota and other biochemical ma markers in the examination that tells us about the state of the functional state of the gut. What does it mean? It's not only microscopic state of the gut that you see in the camera, but also the microscopic state. The microbiome influences the whole body in terms of production of toxins, in terms of um, various dysbiosis, which can influence the development of degenerative diseases that are connected with the aging, for example, the Alzheimer's disease, the Parkinson disease, the atherosclerosis, etc. And it is it, it it does not have to be manifested with any other gut symptom or different other symptom. With the functional point, the gut health panel is important to know m much more about the state of the gut and um, it will give us an option to personally attack the problem. It means that we can, based on the result, propose the individual lifestyle and nutritional solution to, with the combination of, of supplements and uh, drugs, herbal preparation. It depends on the personal needs. And in, in this matter, we are often able to solve some various functional problems such as chronic diarrhea, the brain fog, um, sometimes depression, it, it depends. Often the gut is the source of these problems. My book, The Gut Smart Protocol, is a 14-day gut healing plan based on a quiz. It's one of the first personalized gut healing books on the market, which identifies what your gut type is, mild, moderate, or severe, and based on that, designs a plan that is personalized to you, which will help rebalance your gut as well as improving the mind-gut connection through mind-body techniques like meditation and breath work. So that's what sets my book apart. And it's a great way to start building the foundation of gut health to through your longevity. So I wrote Unexpected and published it this year. And it's been a, a, quite a journey. Um, back in the beginning, my publisher said, you can't write a memoir. But I said, you know, for generations, our ancestors have told stories. And I wanted to tell my story because I overcame breast cancer and Crohn's disease and mold-related illness. And it was so important to tell it as a story because I don't think that's a connected tissue. So my goal is that the reader would actually see themselves in the journey and that they would see their own journey as a reflection of mine. Now, the cool thing is in all the sidebars, there is some practical tips on how to detox from mold, how to heal from Crohn's disease. So all the practical stuff is there, but it's based on my story, my memoir. As telomeres are the most important element in the aging process, we believe that telomere testing, particularly our patented technology, is going to become more and more mainstream as people seek to move from reactive medicine to proactive medicine in which they want to optimize their health and longevity. 
NAD are so important for our body, for every single cell and in number of uh, aspects. So the balance of the NAD is really essential for the healthy metabolism. And by measuring the level, you could tell whether there is a deficiency, there is a, if there is a sign of a metabolic problem, and then uh, whether there is an indication for uh, supplementation. And if there is a supplementation going on, you could follow the efficiency of uh, that. When we age, there are many things, metabolic things are uh, happening. And of course, they will be um, affecting NAD uh, levels. So by measuring, you would know whether you are um, close to in, in your NAD level uh, to the young people or there is some disease which depleting your NAD levels and you need uh, support. So it's an indicator of the well-being of the body. It might be not good uh, to have elevated levels of uh, NAD. The most recent research shows connection of high blood NAD with dyslipidemia. So when there is a disturbance in lipid metabolism, NAD are going up. So this is the uh, first indication where high levels um, are uh, involved. Relevance of NADs uh, in this various aging processes is um, undeniable. There's lots of research that indicates that NADs play an important role in aging processes. Yet at the, uh, at the same time, we don't really, we haven't been able to investigate them in, in uh, much of detail because of the limitation of past technology. So right now we are in a position where we can actually investigate what the NA, how do NADs actually relate to the aging processes. There are quite, quite a lot of actors who um, offer NAD boosting services and they, of course, then what many of them would like to show the, their clients that uh, where are the, uh, what are the starting levels of their NADs and how do they respond to the therapy that is offered. And that is easily done with, with not met technology. Need to measure NADs, first of all, it's universal. Uh, it is such a fundamental metabolite, uh, plays a important role in, in human health. That uh, the, with the advancing research, then uh, the need to understand and monitor your, your patients' NAD levels is becoming more and more inevitable or more and more obvious. And that need will only grow. So the uh, need for NAD measurement in a way that it can be done in your uh, standard clinical environment in a scalable fashion is, uh, is certainly just around the corner. If you have a low NAD levels, the first thing would be probably to consult your uh, physician because uh, it might be related to some of your uh, chronic uh, diseases or chronic uh, problems that uh, one might have. If it's something sudden, again, it can be related to a recent um, a disease. For example, if you had a, a corona or you had an influenza just a week or two ago, it might be that the body is still recovering or has not properly recovered from, uh, from the disease. And so the first thing would be to consult your physician on the situation, what it might be, and uh, the um, and then decide if, uh, if it would be appropriate to boost the NADs, meaning taking any NAD supplementation, or if it's uh, something else that might uh, be needed to investigate the problem further. The NAD clinics should definitely measure the NADs to be able to help their customers better. They should follow up on their patients so that they keep the NAD levels in the um, in the physiological range, so that the levels of NADs don't exceed ex extensively the physiological level, and then they can also adjust the treatment. They can follow up in the long run how the person is doing, what's the well-being of each patient, and then adjust the um, the dosing or the supplementation accordingly. If we look into NAD supplementation, that would be 
are needed for different conditions or for specific diseases, it is really important that every person is advised according to their needs and according to their own levels. Not everybody is the same and everybody is responding differently to different supplements and different dosing of the different supplements. Longevity is not necessarily about living longer. It's about how to live healthier. And NADs, or boosting NADs, might be one of the ways how to do that, how to improve the health. But it has to be uh, viewed and reviewed carefully in the overall of human body. Because the body is a complex machine that is uh, reacting to different stimuli differently for everybody. So I think your longevity is, in, is uh, not necessarily um, ultimate aim of living over 100 years, but it's about how to live a healthy life as long as possible. I believe that NADs, NAD measurement will be performed from every blood sample taken in the laboratory. And I believe that it is important for the clinicians to know the NAD levels of their patients because it might help them to look deeper into their patients' problems and conditions. They might need NAD supplementation, but they also might just need an adjustment of their current treatment and current medication. So I believe that NAD, everybody will have their NADs measured from blood when they need it. The way we practice medicine here is very personalized, precision medicine. I want all my patients to feel their best. I want them to look their best. And as we grow older, including myself and my patients, I want them to have an amazing quality of life. And that means looking good and feeling good in sign and out. My recommendation for people is you don't need to eat six times a day unless it's going to be provided for the show. Pair down the size of the meal, eat smaller meals more frequently, do your cardio, I like fasted cardio, do it in the morning before you eat, and also stay hydrated. Water is your friend. Drink a lot of water, and as you days, get more rest. You need to get your rest so that you can recover. Those are my magic checks for longevity. Oh well, a few things. Number one, you want to have the healthy lifestyle. You want to uh, eat well. Uh, you want to have a very diverse uh, diet. Uh, you want to eat more vegetables. Uh, you uh, want to uh, uh, eat. Uh, uh, don't eat a lot of junk food. Uh, so, lifestyle is really important. You also want to uh, exercise and exercise is the key to uh, everyone and you also want to have uh, a good sleep so uh, you know diet exercise sleep that's something that everyone can do on top of that you really want to supplement for what i call the micronutrient and these are natural vitamins key vitamins uh, such as vitamin d and uh, enough the water vitamins should should help. And uh, most importantly, uh, most people need to supplement for another uh, molecule called NAD or nicotinamide vitamin dinucleotide. Uh, NAD is a uh, relatively newer molecule. Uh, it's a coenzyme that's involved in the function of over 500 different enzymes. And uh, unfortunately, the only the levels decline with age. By our thirties and forties, many people are already deficient in NAD. Uh, just by supplementing with the vitamin D and the NAD above, we can probably extend the people's health span by a good five to ten years. And uh, if you couple that with uh, you know the good diet, good sleep. 
and the exercise we can and you know likely extend the lifespan by the decade or two i mean these are very simple things to do and my recommendation to people is to to find out more about how you can make your lifestyle better you know one thing i think you can do is just take your phone and put it down that's step one put your phone down get outside in nature get outside in the world get a good night's sleep eat really good nutritious foods treat yourself as if you love yourself and see what a difference that makes I think uh, if I was going to recommend anything for people, I would find a good supplement routine because a lot of the food that's in our grocery stores is processed and made the last on shelves for, for months and months isn't very good for us, uh, honestly. So good supplementation is important. I would find a good uh, health and wellness doctor and do regular blood chem panels and see what's going on with the hormones in your body and, and gear your supplementation based on the results of those blood tests. I think that's a my recommendation to people would be to be in the right mindset, to focus on the present moment, ensure a healthy mental state and a healthy body, a well-balanced diet, the environment is important to, who I surround myself with, there are many factors really. I use supplement, which are approved by the anti-doping agency, amino acids, ion and mineral drinks and I try to stay away from protein drinks. My recommendation to people is one, do all you can to eliminate those things in your life that bother you, things that cause you stress, that disrupt your sleep pattern. Try not to be in unhealthy or toxic environments, because we live in a very toxic world in terms of the types of foods and how they're prepared, the air, the water, all these things are pre poisoning So you need to do all you can to protect your house and theft you I think it's, it's, it's find something that you like to do and do it, you know, and really do it and decide to be really good at it. Not just, not just okay, you know, not just like everybody else, but try to do something and become great at it. And if you do that, that is gonna, you're gonna have to put in uh, so much into that, that it's going to change your whole life and it's gonna change the way you feel, the way your body reacts to things and you will, you, you will have a wonderful life and you will have um, amazing uh, quality of life. And uh, hopefully you will live a long time and uh, enjoy more, more things like my grandchildren, which, which I'm just incredibly happy to see them whenever I see them. And I wanna, I wanna watch them grow up. So I, I would say, you know, take care of yourself, stop eating processed foods and sugar and fat and salt and, and there's so many different avenues that you can get good nutrition now and there's so many different products you can you can get now that can help you get that nutrition and uh, I would recommend do whatever you can to stay healthy and fit and and be happy because it's so important to be happy in terms of my age, then I really hope I will be able to keep up with the sport and stay active not just until I am 70 years old, but until I am 90 years old. My recommendation to people is put down all your ego. Get rid of it. Your ego is not your amigo point. Take your ego, put it on the side, live with your heart, do what's right to help other people, and don't think about self, think about everyone together. And by thinking, I'm doing for others, you're gonna receive things that you never saw coming. And that's how God works in this. You'll see that everybody that was here today, their spiritual existence is as important as their physical or their mental health. It is absolutely a true force, your spirit, and you must feed it. So what's my recommendation for people is first get your house in order, get yourself clean, do a good uh, one to three month detoxification. You need a lot of liver opening, kidney opening. You've got to clear the GI tract, get all those levels of toxins down. And then you can look at some of these higher order therapies. The best thing you do long term is make sure that you're eating right, you're getting enough sleep, exercise, water, and make sure you get your blood work checked at least every six months. Longevity. Longevity does not mean just a long life. It mainly means to be healthy. 
In order to achieve this, you have to build your own regime. Regular exercise, healthy diet, good sleep, mindfulness or so-called happy mind, and to avoid toxic substances such as drugs and alcohol. Keep this in your mind, it is never too late to start. If you want, you can read a book called Health Brings Wealth. I would recommend to people not to get influenced by a trend that dictates that they should do what others do as well. Every person is an individual and has specific needs. It is important to understand your body and your needs. Everyone should be aware of what is good for him and what is not. Nowadays, it is very hard to recognize what type of information is actually good for you and what type of information is harmful. Do not focus on what others do, but follow your own path, what's the best recipe for you. Whether it is a diet, an environment, it is vital not to forget about our psychosomatic, happy life, balanced psychic and mental happiness has a big impact on our life. Uh, my best recommendation is number one, food. Proper food for you is the number one thing I believe that is the reason I am still here today. Number two, it's not the consistency of training, where it's the consistent, the consistency of training correctly for a long period of time. Those are the main two. Everything else is added to it. Take care of your health. Make sure that you're body and your blood work is done regularly and have fun and the line have fun my recommendation to people is to get off your butt to get out in the world and do something physically do something mentally read a book engage people in conversation talk to people live life everyone's going to die but you're going to die quicker if you don't use your mind and your body. Pass it on to everybody. Tell them to go to the gym. Tell them to do kickboxing, martial arts. I think when we're in better shape, we love ourselves. The most important thing is love ourselves. When you love yourself, then you start to love other people. That is what everything is. Personal fitness, you're, if you're a negative person, you, then you, come, you, you spread the virus. So we want to stay positive. And we're sprung, we have like people like you and your, your wife, all these other amazing people out here. And like Dr. Robert Goldman, look what he does. He brings this. So I appreciate it. My honor. And the advice to give to people, which is like, uh, you always need to be like, careful. Or what if you what I said, we don't just uh, think of what if like. You don't want to be relied on your sponsors. You always think of something else you do after because if you get injured, your life is gonna stop. Your spouse is gonna fat pay you. So make sure we have the knowledge. You all uh, get your money from whatever bodybuilding they do from their career, and then you could actually invest your money into the business to have a different income from bodybuilding. Because bodybuilding, like I said, is a timing. And then when it's finished, we have your other things. So be safe or be smart, and that's where I tell you. Uh, what's my recommendation to people for longevity is, you know, you need to look at your lifestyle. I mean, that's the first step. Looking to a lot of the anti-aging uh, products that are out there. I, you know, I definitely believe in 2RT. I believe in peptides, these type of supplements that have had me to continue on staying young. But the first and foremost is like living a lifestyle where you eat better, train better, and go well, live much longer. Longevity well, does me, it provides me a peace of mind, automation, and the sense to go on. I read where people do their own thing and not listen to the hitty white noise and just keep going. Make sure you sleep. Make sure that you have hormones. Make sure you exercise. And make sure you deal with stress. Make sure you deal with stress, that stress is the biggest killer. And lack of sleep is the next biggest killer. And there's a lot of things we can do to modulate your genetics and genetic expression to improve your longevity. So you have to do exercise every day. You have to get plenty of sleep, good nutrition, maintain the ideal body weight, not smoke, minimal alcohol. It is a whole array of nutritional supplements that we use that improve longevity. The list is very long. And there's also a lot of peptides that have been used for longevity, particularly those that improve mitochondrial function. 
Nothing better than fasting for longevity, increases stem cells, brings inflammation down. Second thing, hyperbaric oxygen. Drive oxygen into cells and those cells will stay young. I always stress the importance of the, of the basics. Diet, exercise, and mindfulness. And after that, it's very important to define a program individualized for each patient based on supplements or treatments directed to, to improve their, their aging process. But as I say, it has to be personalized. Longevity is an increase in the quality of life as a side effect of an optimal health span related especially, among others, to lifestyle interventions chosen. Don't change yourself because of somebody else. And uh, most importantly, just uh, believe in yourself, especially when other people don't. What would I recommend to people? My recommendation would be the same, to be active, to eat and sleep well, to enjoy life and fulfill the dreams, but also to avoid harmful substances and an excessive stress. Also, to perform preventative medical checkups to avoid any health issues, to keep ourselves healthy as long as possible.